Want to pivot your career to cash in on the generative AI boom? Here are five career options to consider. Well, welcome back to the uh, Cloud Insider channel. My name is Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, B-list geek. And here's where we talk about the realities of cloud computing and the use of generative AI technology. So first, a bit of plugging my own stuff. I do have a new generative AI architecture course, which is going to be on Go Cloud, Go Cloud Careers. Uh, go check that out. It's going to be released in May. Uh, they're pre-registering now, but uh, that really should give you the skills that you need to go off and obtain a generative AI architecture job, which, as we'll talk about in this uh, in this uh, the show, uh, are very lucrative and very fun careers to have. So use the QR code here uh, to go check that out. Looking forward to seeing you in my class. So um, obviously generative AI is all the rage now. It's a boom in terms of the hype. It's boom in terms of interest. All the cloud computing conferences have become generative AI conferences. So we'll talk about some of the career options that you have to, in essence, pivot your career to align yourself with the boom around generative AI. Um, first, this is not for everybody. I'm not telling everybody who's a cloud engineer now to become an AI engineer, or who's a cloud architect now to become a generative AI architect. I'm just telling you that it's an option out there for those of you who are interested in this field. And obviously supply demand, the supply is outstripping, or sorry, the demand is outstripping the supply in a big way. So people are getting some larger salaries out there, uh, certainly for the uh, initial wave of the generative AI systems that are being built. That doesn't mean you're gonna make a ton of money. Uh, that's dependent on where you live, the kind of companies you wanna work for, uh, whether you're going to work remote or on-premise, those sorts of things really kind of come into play. But there is a huge opportunity right now uh, in terms of jobs that are related to leveraging generative AI technology, either in the cloud or on-premise, because we're doing it in both places. So let's talk about some of the career options. First, for those of you who want to skip directly to the particular option you're interested in, I do have uh, time codes listed in the description. So check those out and feel free to skip by them. Uh, and go directly to the uh, option that you're interested in. I'm perfectly fine with that. So I'm going to move from the careers that pay the least to the ones that pay the most. Um, and by the way, that by no means means that if I'm talking about the, a career option that pays the least, that that's not a good salary. I, all of these start at uh, $100,000 and go up. And of course, it really depends on how much experience you have, what industry you're looking to work, what part of the country you live in, all that kind of stuff uh, matters as well. Uh, what country you live in as well. I know I have lots of uh, uh, viewers who are outside the United States, and you need to kind of consider that in your career aspirations and understand that there's going to be certain give and take in terms of where you want to work and what you're able to make. Um, but the great thing now is it's a global economy and people are working for companies all over the world where they'll never set foot in the office and, and making great salaries. And we, we certainly live in a remote work environment where the remote workforce is a, a strong option for lots of organizations out there that want to hire the talent that they need and provide them the flexibility to live wherever they want. And also as someone who's going to work for a company, you have the flexibility to live wherever you want and work for the company you want to work for. So that's a great option now. That's something good that came out of the pandemic, if anything good came out of the pandemic. So the first career option for generative AI is AI and machine learning engineer. You remember that generative AI is really a derivative of machine learning. So the technologies are one-to-one -one related. So don't, don't let people tell you any different. Uh, so generative AI is a new version of machine learning where we're able to generate images, audio, video, different content, as we know, we've all played with chat GPT. Uh, in any number of ways. So in other words, it allows us to interact or get output out of these, uh, these AI systems, in this case, generative AI systems, in ways that are much more valuable to us. In other words, we can have it write a thank you note, we can have it draw a picture, all the cool things we can do for generative AI. I'm not gonna get too much into it here, but that's the reason the hype is around generative AI right now. So AI and machine learning engineer um, is the person who is hands-on that develops the AI models and uh, machine learning algorithms to implement the AI technology. So they're, they're the hands-on person. They're, they're the person that actually builds the stuff. So if the architect, and we'll talk about that later, is the one who designs things and configures the technology and comes up with the logical and the physical design of the technology, the AI engineers actually carry things out. So in other words, they select the technology, 
they uh, they code they code the algorithms. They set up the uh, they set up the AI models. They build the LLMs. So they do all the direct work to make things happen. Um, so why are they the least paid? Well, normally those are entry level types of jobs because they learn a particular skill that's very narrow. So in other words, they understand how to do generative AI using AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google, and therefore they're hired for their particular narrow skill set. And because they have to do the hands-on capability, they can't understand everything. They can't, they can't be an expert in all the generative AI and AI tooling out there. So they focus on a particular narrow subset of those tooling, which is fine, but they're an engineer for that particular tooling. So normally they're uh, in many instances, entry level jobs. They pay pretty well. Like I said, they started about a hundred thousand dollars and go up. And really it's the ability to get your foot in the door with an organization and then work up the chain from there or wherever your career aspirations are. Now you can certainly, uh, certainly thrive in place in being an engineer. There's lots of engineers making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. They've been with the company for many years, hugely valuable because you need these people around to build these things. But that's an option if you're more inclined to hands on, you really find that fun. And I did when I was younger, then that's an option for you to look into. So the next would be robotics engineer. And these are engineers um, where AI is integrated into robotic systems. And they're able to build these systems that are able to carry activities out. And we all know robotics, we've all seen science fiction. Normally these are not about humanoid things that are walking around the room. Uh, these are robotics technology, things that would exist on a factory floor or the ability to automate, uh, uh, the ability to automate um, uh, exploration if you're in the oil company, things like that. These are really cool gigs. If you think about it, you get to play with some very cool equipment. And now that AI, is getting into everything. It certainly has been in robotics for many years and certainly generative AI is going to be in that area. And robotics engineers, normally um, very uh, hard to find, the good ones that are out there. Obviously it's a hands-on position. You're an engineer, you're doing stuff and you're coding stuff and you're setting up the systems, you're building the robotic systems, you're testing them, you're deploying them. And it's everything to do with that. Now, obviously, a wide variety of applications here. I mentioned the factory robots, uh, the ability to have exploration robots, the ability to have crime fighting, fighting robots, uh, space exploration, all these sorts of things are on the table. It is a very cool job. Uh, the, the times that I've been involved with these sorts of projects, um, because number one, it's a specific skill. You're dealing with specific technology. In other words, you're narrowly focused on, on doing, uh, using one set of technology over another. So that's why you're an engineer. You have the deep expertise in that particular, that particular field. And you build some really cool stuff. Um, the last robotics project I worked on was a drone that was able to run the railroads and basically deal with maintenance activities, things like that. And I just found the, the whole field fascinating. Obviously the AI, other AI professions come into come into bear there. We still need uh, AI machine learning engineers, um, generative AI uh, engineers, all these people who understand the specific AI technology. But as a robotics engineer, you focus on how AI is applied to particular mechanical operations and anything to automate various systems, which I think is a very cool career path. If you find it interesting, go do it. So the next would be data scientists. We know these positions pretty well. They've been around for a number of years and they're professionals and analyze and interpret complex data to assist in decision-making. And they're essential for generative AI system because obviously data is everything. So garbage in, garbage out with generative AI. So we need the data scientists to know uh, what data is being consumed in the various system, how it's being processed and the state of data as it relates to the output of, of that. So we need data security, your data performance management, your ability to deal with algorithms, understand the science of setting up databases using any number of database technologies. And so these are kind of architect meets engineer kind of job. You just have to have a deep understanding of how databases are designed and implemented. So the ability to create uh, any relationship diagrams and logical and physical design of the database, the ability to deal with metadata, and the ability to understand all the information that needs to flow into these generative AI systems and also flow out of the systems. You can't do generative AI without having deep data scientist expertise on the team. And these roles are very important, obviously data focused. Um, Many instances they call for PhDs. I don't think you need to be, have a PhD to do this job. Uh, and you can certainly learn how to use the technology yourself. 
and understand the space yourself. Obviously, it's easier to you know, go through direct and formal training, but there's lots of good data scientists out there that don't have college degrees, don't, certainly don't have PhDs, and they're really exceptional at what they do. So if data interests you and you're looking for a way to get into the field of generative AI, data scientist is a cool career option. So the next career option is something that's uh, fairly new. It's AI ethics specialists, or what they like to call themselves ethicists. I, I have a problem saying that, but it, uh, it's kind of a cool role. And it kind of came up to the fact that we have a lot of ethical concerns about utilization of AI technology, specifically generative AI technology. So when it should be used, how uh, how we deal with things like biases, uh, you know, how we check for uh, legal policy compliance, how we check for things that are normally going to affect human beings in a negative way. And obviously with AI, there's lots of things to consider. There's, there's replacement of jobs. Generative AI is gonna take over a lot of the information oriented jobs. When, <clears throat> when should you do that and why you should do it? All those things are really considered by the AI ethics specialist. I like having these people on the team, number one, because they become the conscience of the team and asking the questions as to whether something should be done, even though we can do it, should we do it? I think that's important. And also the ability to find biases in the system, making sure that the uh, AI models that we're building don't have a particular bias, uh, gender, race, things like that. Um, Obviously, those are wrong, but they also get you sued. And also, these are legal protections as well. One of the things that I found out with a lot of the AI systems I built over the years is that they have a tendency to get legal challenges, specifically things that are used to make selections. So if you're picking loan applications, things like that, and they're going to want to know uh, how the ethics policies and procedures were applied to the building of those AI models. And this is the person that can do that for you. So in other words, having these people on staff is incredibly important. Um, it's, you know, uh, second to the last of the uh, people who are getting paid. So obviously people who deal with AI specialists um, uh, make a pretty good, pretty, good, uh, pretty good amount of money. They're hard to find. Normally these are people who come up to the technical um, ranks. In other words, they've been uh, architects, they've been data scientists, they've been engineers, they've been AI specialists, they've been, uh, they've had a number of roles and they've stepped into the AI ethics role, uh, probably going through some very minimal training. Uh, a lot of this stuff is on the job training that moves forward. There's no one degree program you could go through to be an AI ethics specialist. And they know enough to make some of the core decisions and understand how the technology works. So it's, it's probably be architect meets uh, architect with a conscience, you know, kind of things. And so it's having the conscience on the team to make sure you're not doing the wrong things with the technology, which I think is incredibly important. The last thing we want to do with this generative AI technology we're building is to hurt people. And this is a person, a uh, man or woman who can be on the team that can tell us how to, to, how to avoid doing that. And I think that's awesome. So that's a career option. Um, and it's a cool career option. Finally, the last generative AI career option that I think is it's it's the most paid uh, and it's kind of the hottest position out there is generative AI or AI architect. And they're responsible for dining, uh, designing and overseeing development of the generative AI system. So just as we had enterprise architecture architects, we have cloud architects, we have generative AI architects or AI architects. It's, it's kind of the same stuff, whether you're working on generative AI system or more traditional AI systems, many of the knowledge, all that stuff is transferable within each other. Obviously, generative AI, there's a new technology stack to consider, and you have to have knowledge of that, but this is really about being an AI architect uh, in general. And so this is the person, um, man or woman, who's responsible for the configuration of the AI technology. Normally, they're the person who leads the team. So there's leadership uh, requirements here. You have to work with the engineers, you have to work with the data scientists, you have to work with everybody we just mentioned, and more. Uh, work with the stakeholders to make sure that they're uh, informed on what you're looking to do. And you're responsible for the budget. You're responsible for bringing the system in on time. You're responsible for building an architecture, uh, in this case, a generative AI architecture, which is going to bring the most value back to the business. In other words, you're responsible, no pressure, for building the system that's going to be as optimized as possible. So we're doing the most with the least amount of money. Now, the word of gener generative AI, uh, AI technology, that's important because we can obviously spend a lot of money on this stuff and people are spending a lot of money on this stuff. So over-provisioning processing, the ability to use the resources, all these sorts of things. And there's probably five factorial ways of solving each of these problems, but there's only a few ways that are gonna be optimized that's gonna bring the best value back to the business. 
this person is responsible for doing that. That's a huge amount of responsibility. They're also responsible for being the leaders uh, of the teams. They're responsible for the budgets and they're responsible for bringing everything in on time and on budget. So um, consulting firms uh, do this stuff. They do have a AI architecture practice, um, but anybody who's building a generative AI system or an AI system uh, specifically, whether it's in the cloud or on premise, is going to need a good AI architect and someone who's been through the ringer in terms of understanding how all these things come together and how to build and deploy these systems and how to look at the, the correct logical architecture. In other words, an architecture without uh, considering the technology and then the physical architecture, the ability to take the architecture and assign technology to the particular stack. And so probably the most important position I think uh, role out there in the world of uh, AI and generative AI systems. Obviously, I'm biased. I do have a course on generative AI architecture uh, and uh, that you can check out as well. But you can transfer to this from being a cloud computing architect, from being an IT architect, uh, any number of places you can work your way up from being a robotics engineer or a machine learning engineer. But just keep in mind that this is an architectural role. And this is not hands-on. So you're not here to build something. You're here to design something. So you're the one who's the decider, who's picking the technology, picking the stack, picking the path. And hopefully you're making the right decisions for the organization to bring the most value back because many organizations are betting the bank uh, that these generative AI systems are going to pull a lot of value based on the amount of money that's gonna be invested. This person, this man or woman, this generative AI or AI architect is responsible for making the decisions that make that a win. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, make sure to check out my LinkedIn learning courses, check out my InfoWorld blog, check out my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. And please, please, please check out my uh, new generative AI architect course out on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, I th that thing is going to be a long form course, hands on, uh, working directly with me as well. In other words, I'm, you're not just watching a bunch of videos. So if you're looking to get the skills that pay the bills, that's probably a good place to go. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. You guys be safe. Cheers.